I'd like to welcome you all to Situate Planning Board, Thursday, September 27th, 2018. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our first item, first, I would like to welcome Rebecca Lewis, who is our new alternate member to the planning board. Thank you. Hopefully you will enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at, we have um, continued public hearing, Scenic Road Shade Trees at 92 Neal Gate. Continued public meeting, Site Plan Administrative Review, Common Driveway, and it is going to be continued. So, if you would care to make the motion. I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the site plan administrator review public meeting in Scenic Road Public Shade Tree public hearing for the proposed common driveway at 92 Neal Gage Street until October 11, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. Is there a second? Yep. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It's a vote. Thank you. Our next item is surety release for Blanchard Farm. Uh, you all have in your backup material, mm -hmm. and we've gone over this, they have also forfeited $4,000 for the um, non-construction of that stone wall at the entrance. Are there any questions from the board? Is there anybody here from Blanchard Farm? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll hear the board first, please. Yes. Thank you. Bill? How do I know that $4,000 is gonna be spent the way we think it is? Didn't we, didn't we uh, pass a motion on that? Yes, we did, we did. Yeah, I there was a letter that was filed with somebody. Was it with the town the clerk? Or, yeah. It says we're going to get $4,000. Right. It's the $4,000 comes to this building somewhere. And it's going to the back door. But and it's going to go for that scepter. So they had a T account or some sort of an account that basically puts the $4,000 into? I would hope so. Yes. But, but we, we passed a motion on that, yeah. didn't we? So maybe we should make sure that that motion gets, it's gonna to go to the town clerk, I imagine? Th that motion was filed with the town clerk the day after we did it. So okay. it's, the motion is filed. Um, I need to figure out the, um, how it moves, how we move the money around. And logistics of it all. Logistics of it, yes. So that is to be determined, but um, okay. it's been agreed upon by um, Blanchard Farm to forfeit that four thousand dollars, and it's all been filed with the town clerk. Okay. Right. I think. I think it. I think we understood all that. The the question is, when the money comes into the town, how do we know it's going to go towards the thing we said it was going to go towards? Actually, the money is not coming into the town. We are releasing fifteen thousand dollars and keeping back four. In what so account? In our revolving account. And so what we will then do is, is that how you how you have it? That's how that's how we've always done it's it. It's an assurity it's an assurity fund now, the yep. nine nineteen thousand five hundred dollars plus interest. Minus four thousand dollars, they get back fifteen thousand. I can't remember the exact number. That four thousand dollars I imagine will stay in surety until we move it to where it needs to move. But that's those are the logistics pieces that I don't have connected yet. So so planning department has control over that yes at this moment yes okay okay bill no well said all right okay i move to accept which wait, 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 hang Sorry. on hang on hang on ben um i don't have anything on this okay um i see we have a, just a checklist of all the things that have happened this this was a checklist that was done by the dpw it's a deep my understanding is it's a DPW checklist that Wait, you filled it out or no, we didn't that the um, I'm not sure whether it's the applicant or our Amory the consulting engineer agrees that all of that information all of this has, has been, been done. And yes. done the engineer agrees that uh, yes okay. and there's a letter you have a letter in your packet from the engineer saying that 
all, everything has been completed. Okay. Um, as builds have been are in compliance and all of that information. Just a question on the as builds. Does that include the stormwater system? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I would imagine yes. I would there's two different as belts. So there's a road as belt and the other as belt. The road or road for public acceptance is a different one. Our as belt should have all the imp correct information that it entails. Well, this road is not a public for correct, public acceptance. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Not a, not at the moment. Okay. Okay. Are you all set? For now. Okay. Rebecca. Yes. Any comments? No. Okay. Um, would you please identify yourself? Um, Jennifer King, 20 Cary Litchfield Lane. Um, I just had a question and I had requested um, public records. I just wanted the board to take into consideration that there were four, um, sorry, I'm losing. There were four enforcement fines against um, four of the parties involved. And I just wanted to advise the board to not make a decision until all four of those fines have been paid. If memory serves me correctly, and I, maybe you can back me up on this, Steve, um, basically we chose not to enforce those fines because they did exactly what we told them to do. So there were no fines. Okay, so I don't have the <coughs> documentation on that. Do you, is that in the minutes? Or how does that? I, you know, <laughs> it's I mean, been a while, so I don't remember no, uh, off the top of my head. I, think, I don't remember either. I no. think we would have to sort of ask so when, what meeting was that? Do you remember? Excuse me? You remember which meeting that was? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, but um, That's my problem. four I don't. parties, August 22nd was the date that the four parties were, um, letters were dated, letting August. them know about the fines. So I don't see any letters letting them know that they don't need to pay the fines. August 22nd of this year or last year? 17. 17. $600 each. Oh, that's, so I don't know I'm if I can even find those minutes. Because <laughs> it took us a while to get those minutes out, right? Yes. I don't even know where I'd start. Um, and I, I frankly don't remember what we did with that, so I would have to consult the record before. Okay, I couldn't find anything saying that they did not have to or that you were waiving the fees. I only found information that you had assessed the fees. And you filed a request? Of the bylaws. You had filed a request for information? Yes, sir. To see if they were paid. Okay. The request for information came in today. Okay but I can't find any information in any of the minutes or any that they don't have to pay them. I would think that there would be some follow-up letter to the four parties that they don't need to pay it. Well, the only other uh, thing may have been we made a decision at the, at the meeting itself, and that would be reflected in the minutes of the meeting, right? right? And that's, that's why I'm saying we could at least consult that. I, I, don't, I don't know that I can put my hands on them right away. Um, so but the actual, maybe Shari could, I, I don't know. I just think that the fees should have been paid, so I'm a little bit shocked that. And yeah. um, why do you feel that they should be paid? Um, because Laura Harbottle went and um, filed this with the town and with the police and the violation of notice for the town laws. I think that they should pay that because they've had a lot of problems with the stormwater. But we have dealt with that. It has been dealt with. Um, that letter is dated, what, August 7, in 2017. And Laura Harbottle was no longer with us. Well, that, that, which that is has the, no bearing. No bearing. Stephen signed the letter. Yeah. OK. But Laura actually filed with the police, the warrant or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I just asked that those fees be paid. I'm just inquiring. There was no follow-up. It was just kind of brushed under the rug. Nothing has been brushed under the rug. Nothing. Let out of the barn. All right. We have a motion. We will take it under advisement. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion. 
Move to accept Blanchard Bob LLC's request to release the amount of surety being held by the planning board for completion of the Blanchard Bob Estate subdivision of $19,500 plus interest of $84.11 minus $4,000 that had been forfeited on August 23, 2018 to supplement the purchase and or installation of a storm scepter to be installed by the town. The total amount released to Blanchard Bob LLC is $50,584.11. Is there a second? Yep. Further discussion? Yes, I, I think we should address the comment that came up. Okay. Okay, and um, do we know if Blanchard Farm LLC was fined? Do we know how much it is? I, yep. Yeah. I represent Blanchard Farm. Would you please sit down and... and um, I apologize, I didn't realize at the time that we were speaking about Blanchard Farm. <laughs> Uh, John Barry, manager of Blanche Farm LLC. So the uh, the fines that were were issued um, were issued relative to an issue with drainage, uh, specific to a lot the way a particular lot was being developed that did not comply with um, maintaining a, a swale on the back of the property. It was on the deed. It was on the plan. The particular builder. Um, did not comply with that swale. It ended up forcing water into an abutting property. Um, it had nothing to do with the subdivision. It had to do with a specific lot development. The fine had, had something to do with that specific incident. I will say for the record that I, even though I wasn't the builder of that lot, I received the call at 3 o'clock in the morning and I was there with two other employees trenching and redirecting water and pumping. Uh, responded responded uh, with drying equipment, even though, again, we weren't culpable. Um, but we did respond uh, as the developer of the subdivision because I received the call at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, beyond that, um, it became very apparent as time went on that we were not culpable or responsible for what had taken place, even though we participated in the, in the solution. Um, and so I believe there was uh, uh, the the um, fine was removed uh, at the time. It was uh, it was legally removed, and I forget the process, frankly. But I just know that it was it was removed, and we were not obligated. And it was frankly a small. It wasn't a large amount of money, um, but that is my recollection. And I apologize. I had no idea that this would come up. I would have done a little more homework on it had I known that. But. Um, I don't even recall the amount of the fine, but it was, it, I don't think it was a significant amount of money. Um, but again, it was not due to anything specific to the subdivision. It was specific to a lot that was being developed by a, a builder that we sold a lot to. Well, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that full characterization, but be that as it may, if we issued a fine, if we, if we subsequently waive the fine, then I'm fine with it. If we didn't, then we should make sure it gets addressed. And um, I don't have any way of sort of figuring that out right here. Um, so do you do you have any? I have the motion that you voted on that was filed with the town clerk on June 27, 2017, um, that says this was the motion to find that a natural swale at the back of lots eight was eliminated with the development of Blanchard Farm Estates and when there is heavy rain storm water has flowed onto adjacent properties. The proposed mitigation consisted of a shallow swale connected to the level sputter north of the de detention basin. The town's consulting engineer believes the swale should be deeper with a berm constructed on one side. The planning board agrees with this approach and requires that this swale be shown on a plan to be submitted to the consulting engineer for his approval. At that point, at that point, it shall be constructed by the contractor. This work shall be completed within three weeks, or the planning board may pursue the issu issuance of fines in accordance with the town of situate non-criminal disposition bylaw. So, with the term "may," I don't know that the fines were. Well, the fines or were or the fines were issued. The letters were issued, right? Were they issued before or after that meeting? Do you know? I 
So I will state for the record, I think they were issued. Yes, it looks as though they were issued. They were issued after that On meeting. the 20, 22nd of August. Right. Okay. So the question is, subsequent to their issuance, did we waive them or did we vote to uh, rescind I have them? not been able to fully research that yet. I researched a little and had yet to find anything, but... Um, Do we know the total value of the fines? I think it was 600 per property. For, there were four fines, I believe. So twenty-four hundred dollars. No, not assessed. Mm -mm. That was the was I think what they're saying. There were separate parties. There, but you know, again, I'm I wasn't prepared for this conversation tonight. But um, as my memory serves, um, we hired our uh, council to pursue this because again, we did not own the land. Planchard Farm LLC sold the lot. What was happening on that particular lot? We didn't even have the rights to go on it to remedy it, and that was the conversation between our council. And, and if I recall, the the actual fine was issued for sort of repeated failure to respond. Not from Blanchard Farms' perspective. We, well, we didn't it own was the land. August. It was August, right? And if we we passed that motion in June, that's a lot. That's a lot longer than three weeks. Sir, I, don't, um, I truthfully don't want to relive it, but we no, did I not have the legal rights it. to deal with it. We didn't own the land. That is the reality. We didn't own I'm not, it. I'm, I don't want to relitigate it here. I just want to know what happened, right, what we did. And if, if one of the outstanding fines is to Blanchard Farm and these fines are to others as well, then whatever the outstanding fine to Blanchard Farms, I would say we resolve before we release that money totally prepared if you folks make a conditional vote subject to I know it was waived and I'm fine with you folks making a conditional vote to ensure that that was in fact waived uh, that would be yeah. fine okay. with me would you right. like to make an amendment to the motion I'm amending it that way <laughs> is there a second to the amended so um, I, the the, uh, the modification is that um, that we would uh, hold back uh, the amount of the fine right no we amended to investigate all of this so that the well we're going to have to adjust the numbers what i'm saying is and we don't want to have to come back right, right? all right so if the fine's still outstanding and it's six hundred dollars and we would subtract six hundred dollars from this if it's not still outstanding we would release the whole amount yeah so that's what i would say it's fine by me Justice okay. Aaron says it's up to the fifteen thousand four five hundred eighty-four dollars and eleven cents. Right, is contingent upon the release of a demonstration of the release of the fines. Mm -hmm. Is that, that as amended? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Are you all set now, Steve? Um, I would just say, Bill, if if the fine um, has not been waived, then we would reduce this amount by six hundred dollars or whatever the fine amount was. Okay. Okay. Works yeah, I, I appreciate that correction because otherwise I'm back here to. Yeah, I don't want you to come back. I just want to resolve it. Okay. Great. All right. All those in favor of the motion as amended? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And Shari, would you just make sure we, if they file the information request, yeah. I guess we you have, you have, have to respond anyway. We have 10 days to respond okay. to that. So that's Will you just let us know? Absolutely. Thank you. All right, our next item is an Form A, A and R for um, 9 Prospect Avenue. For those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, J.D. Gibbs. I work for Ross Engineering. Paul could not be here tonight, so you don't get to see me too often. Um, we're presenting to the board a form A plan on behalf of our client for 9 Prospect Ave up on Second Cliff. <coughs> um, it's currently uh, a house on a lot with about 30,000 square feet. It's on the corner of Prospect and, and uh, Edward Foster Road. We've created a lot, conforming lot for the existing house and the remaining land. We all have a plan. It's a lot. Creating lots three and four. 
Uh, both have requisite frontage, lot width, lot area, and the existing house maintains all the current selling setbacks that are required by the building department. Right, and I'm open to any questions. Yeah. All right, Ben. Um, could you speak a little bit to the, looks like there's a kind of leaching system or I'm, I'm just not sure what this yeah, so symbology if, is. Yeah, so if you, if you, if, well, so the, uh, one of the planning board rules and regs for Form A's is to show the existing septic systems if you can. So these, these couple, the, there are two houses. One is to the right of number nine, which is um, Barbara Roberts' house, number 15. Uh, when this was originally done back in 1993, Ross Engineering created two lots, one for uh, Barbara Roberts at number 15. I should put my glasses on. And then um, these two lots that we're creating were previously lot two. At that time, um, septic system for lot nine was built on that lot, and a septic system for number 15 was also on that lot. You could have a septic system and an easement. It didn't have to be on your own lot. Um, if you refer to note number nine, we checked with the uh, sewer department, and neither of those two houses have tied into sewer yet, but the sewer stubs are there, and the sewer's on mm -hmm. prospect. So done, they'll have to tie in and those systems can be removed and the easement will be no longer necessary. So that's what all those lines are. <laughs> that. Okay, um, it meets the general requirement, it meets the requirements of a Form A. So lot uh, could I Can I ask a question? Sure. Oh, go ahead, Bill. No, go ahead. I don't, my question was just, is lot three a fully, a fully compliant lot? Which one? Lot three. Lot three? Yes. 10,000 square feet, 100 feet of frontage, uh, 100 foot lot width through the existing structure, and this existing structure meets the front side. And, well, there's no rear setback on that, but two sides and two front setbacks. Okay. Steve? Um, how does this tie into um, access to the septic system? I, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out. Sure, can I come up with I or see where it's tied in. I guess I'm talking about sort of legally what's the what's the mechanism whereby 15 has access to the septic system and 9 has access to the septic system. So 15 has an easement that goes through number 9 because that is one lot right now that number 9 is on. So they have a sept an easement for the septic system to go through. The septic system for number 9 is currently on the lot for number nine. Right. Okay. So um, they have an easement for to traverse. Well, they have an easement for the whole septic system, the septic field, and everything, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, so how? That will all go away mm -hmm. when they tie into the sewer. Right. That will just no longer I'm just they thinking about the, you, you know, the A and R here, and. Who's actually proposing the subdivision of the last land? Is it? It's, it's is the, it the two, um, the two owners of the property? So both owners have consented to this. They're this? sisters, yeah. But so in your in your filing, they've consented to both owners have consented to this. Huh? Yeah. Okay. They signed the form A application. It's all here. Both of them have signed it. There you go. Okay, who's, who's the actor? Barbara owns one parcel. I think and Susan owns the other two. Are they all in conjunction with each other? So, so this was, I don't know if you remember, this was his house. His two daughters are Barbara and Susan. So Barbara, when we created the just two lots back in 93, Barbara got one and, and the father lived in number nine. He has since passed away and they've created the trust, so it's the trust that owns what is... The trust owns the second lot that you're subdividing. It owns a whole of the lot we're subdividing. It owns yeah, all of this. That's what I hear. It owns the second, there are only two lots right now. It owns the second lot with the house, with the number nine house, right? Yeah, and the lot 
but it owns both lots three and four, which are currently just one lot. That's what I just said. Okay. Right. Then we're in agreement. Right now, it's only, there are only two lots there. We're only proposing. Number 15. And oh, well, 15 is not even part of this. That's, that's, that's just the only two. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, you. And you're now proposing to take the second lot and split it into yes. two lots. Correct. And the owner of the current big second lot is the trust. The trust. Barbara and Susan. 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 Yes. Susan. And then the owner of 15 is Barbara. Is Barbara. Yes. And so she's signing for both the trust and her lot. Yes. I guess. Does that make it? Yes. I'm her her lot is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they wouldn't have us come here and propose Because you're modifying something you. that she has an easement on, right? Correct. Yes. So I'm just assuming that they are. That we're saying both, they, both the trust and Barbara, in, in, with respect to 15 Prospect Ave, is yes. in agreement with that. Yes. That's okay. Correct. That's what I wanted to get clear okay. Ben? Bill? That's it. Sorry? Another house up on the cliff. <laughs> okay. No, I'm good. Okay. An A&R is an A&R. All right. Is it voted? Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to endorse. So move. Right here. I move to endorse <laughs> as <laughs> approved but required a plate of land in the town of Situate, Mass. Nine Prospect Avenue. Prepared by Ross Engineering Company Inc. for applicant owner Barbara Roberts and Susan Brosnan and trustees, dated 9 12 18, as the division of land shown on the accompanying plan is not a subdivision because it shows every lot on the plan has frontage of at least a distance presently required under the Citroen zoning bylaw on the public way of Prospect Avenue. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It is so voted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we, do we have minutes to approve? No minutes. No minutes. minutes. Do we have um, accounting. accounting? Accounting. I move to approve the requisition of $186.73 to JR Graphics for office supplies, for $3,627.60 to Horsley Witten for review of Seaside and Citra performance guarantee. And for five hundred sixty dollars for Horsley Witten for Seaside etc. pre-construction meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's a vote. Liaison reports. Um, Water Resource Committee met this week. I was unable to attend, but the main topic of, of discussion was finalizing their water offsets proposal, which will be going to. Board of Selectmen fairly soon. Um, they will, I keep mentioning this, but they will be asking for a support letter from this board prior to going to the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'm gonna try to get uh, hopefully a draft of their final, well, draft of the final um, version and take a look at it and hopefully I'll be able to uh, kind of have some back and forth with them beforehand. Uh, other than that, uh, ZBA, I watched the video. and you were there. So I was there. You can, Yes. I, I can tell you, but you can fill in. All right. Um, basically, they voted to approve the signage, yeah. um, and it, it was seemed ambiguous to me from the video whether they're going to take our suggestions Yes, or not. they are. They, okay. They are. They're going to talk to traffic rules, and they're going to... Um, they're going to the design review committee? Well, that was a little convoluted, and I'm not really sure if they're going to... Um, Let's see, 710. Basically, um, it was decided. 710.5E. Okay. The chairman of the, of the board, who was Tibbetts? Ed. Ed. Basically stated, why are you here? And if he felt citing 710.5E, um, Section E of the um, zoning bylaws, general provisions pertaining to signs in all districts. Nothing herein shall be construed to prohibit the placement within the town of Situate of street signs, traffic signs, directional signs, or any other government governmental authority or agency signs. And so that's how it was approved. 
under 710.5. So is that a yes or a no? What do you mean, yes or Are they going to consult the Design Review Committee for the sign? I would hazard to say, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> that's what, that's what it, doesn't like it. it doesn't it sound like it. It doesn't sound like it, and I voice the concerns about traffic. I voice the concerns about the busyness of man lot and all that goes on around there. I did state that. 710. Point well, 710 doesn't, point is neither five. here nor there on the, on the design of the sign, right? I, well, the yeah. mm -hmm. Why don't we just call up Eddie and find out what, what's, what the story is? Mm -hmm. Well, we could do that, or we could call well, I'll, I'll just, I'll knock call next door. Knock next door. Um, and, and then the other thing on zoning, which again, you can probably fill in, there was one interesting issue that we should kind of keep our finger on the pulse of because I don't know if it's happened before but the gentleman that owns the um, bowling alley wants yeah. to put in um, transform an office space to an apartment and there was a big discussion of whether that being a commercial use in the business district would putting in an apartment which is an accessory use to the main use constitute an accessory dwelling uh, and there was kind of a lot of back and forth and I think they are going to be checking in with either our board or with Karen to see whether we want to do an accessory dwelling permit. They did issue a finding that it was not substantially more detrimental to change the use to the residential unit, but um, it's just an interesting, I guess, legal or bylaw issue that we'll have to think about and whether we want to see that um, application come through as an accessory dwelling or not so what was the what was the reason to go to the zba change of use i didn't stay for that but I is that what it would be it would have to be it have to be it, it, they can't approve an accessory dwelling no right? they can't so, so they're basically saying under whatever section <laughs> they can come that, up with that that's interesting because I thought we looked at change of use. We did. So I'm not sure what the uh, your change of use belongs to the ZBA. But that's that's what they own. But I'm not so sure of why it went to them anyway. Well, I mean, it's if it's an acceptable use in in the particular district, then we've always looked at a facility that was a change of use of that particular facility. Maybe it's because they're only changing a portion of it. I, I, I'm just not familiar with. Well, don't we have a harbor district? Yes, we have all kinds. Of I know. They could put it there, the harbor district. We, but we did the one that was up over. Um, what used to be Goddard's. Goddard's. Yeah. That was done as an accessory dwelling. That's a commercial real. real right, and it's an allowed use in, yeah. in the zone, right? Right. I guess I just don't understand why it went to the zoning board. I don't know. It's the first time hearing of it. Yeah, there. It was uh, uh, Jeff Delisi was the attorney representing him, and uh -huh. he kind of even was like, "I'm not sure we're supposed to be here, but I have an abundance of caution. We're here, okay. um, so I'm sure if we want to ask, he'd be more than happy to give his uh, opinion about why they <laughs> filed and everything." Right. Well, if he's converting it to accessory dwelling, I would say then it should come here. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't. If somebody's received asking any, us. We right? haven't received anything, but it sounds yeah. like we might be getting something. But actually, the the harbor is not a commercial district. It's business. Yeah, yeah. It's not commercial. We have very little commercial space in this town, thanks to the MBTA. Yeah, but the accessory, accessory dwelling bylaw allows an accessory dwelling mm -hmm. for the business district, right? Yep. Uh, with the village overlay or whatever, yeah, it does. I don't even think it requires the village. I don't overlay. think it does either. It's just business district. Yep. If you if you look at the because they were there long before we went yeah. into Harvard. I'm sure they love listening to the bowling balls. Oh. Well, I think it's for him. Oh. <laughs> they intend to live there. Oh, good. 
Which that they did say that the bowling is a non-conforming use. <laughs> oh, it's been so there that forever. That opened up all can yeah, forever, yeah. But the bowling is a non-conforming use. Yeah. yeah. But it's pre-existing. Though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's otherwise known as grandfathered. <laughs> but then it became, well, if we change the use, does... Oh, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they went to ZBA. Because it's yeah. a pre-existing non-conforming right. and they're changing the use, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. So there you go. You answered your own question. Very good. <laughs> Oh, wow. Sorry, I'm just trying to oh, make fine. sure I understand. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. It was confusing. It, w- it was like an out. That was the bulk of the meeting. But under the special, under the uh, accessory dwelling. I just had that five thirty. You have that section seven ten. It might be five thirty. Oh, five thirty. Yeah, right here. Yeah. There's a whole. Isn't there a whole section about? Um, In the business district, right? Yeah, so there's a whole discussion about mm-hmm. additional requirements for affordable accessory dwellings in the mm-hmm. business district. Do we differentiate? Affordable accessory dwellings. So maybe this isn't considered an affordable accessory no, dwelling? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. And the viability of the business districts. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to look, we'll have to look at it in greater detail. Okay. Yeah, under Harbor uh, District, under, under Harbor Business, there's a special permit. That's what it is in the uh, in the table. Yep, yeah, it's 420. Nothing in the business. Oh, in the Harbor District. Yeah. So. So that's in the Harbor District, right? Yes. So that's okay. Harbor Business. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like Harbor. that's pretty clear then. There is much. They have to come and see us. Okay. All right. And then CPC met last night to um, go over and vote on the McDonald Farm, the purchase of such. And it was voted unanimously to purchase it and bring it forward to town meeting. There will be a final appraisal once that, if the appraisal comes in, for more than $599,000, we will not pay that. If it comes in for less than 599000 the owners will not accept it. So we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Life is a mystery. That's a pretty narrow target. Yeah. It is. <laughs> so at any rate, that was last night. It, it got a little it, Is it you won't pay more than 599 but somebody else could contribute? Well, that's to the purchase? Yes, somebody mm-hmm. else could. Okay. Somebody else could. So, okay, but planning and development report, we don't have anything? Or do we? I would say no, not really. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have, um, we're reviewing the RFPs All right. next week. Yes, right. for master plan. Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday right? the second. For the master plan. Yeah. So we're going to go through that process. You're going through that process Tuesday. Yeah. Is that There's at the Board of Selectmen? No, no. This is no, the, kind of the subgroup doing that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who's re- just reviewing the RFPs and working with Karen and Brad um, to just give our opinion on, you know, sort of the the pros and cons of each RFP, right? Ultimately, we're going to have to say somebody. So. Um, what else? Oh, there was one. Um, I don't know if you stayed for the Board of Selectmen's meeting that we were at um, with Rebecca. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a discussion about um, changes in sewer rates. And I just wondered if you had any detail on that. Did you stay for that? No. But I hear that that's maybe not going to happen. <laughs> Um, I think that the abandoned to public outcry over the dirty water it was glossed over. But, but it, my understanding was they were proposing to increase the sewer rates to pay for some of the stuff they're going to do, then, right? Um, the, it, it hit some resistance from uh, one of the selectmen who said they need to go back and rethink it and rethink that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else that anybody has? I attended traffic rules and regulations. Yes. On Tuesday. 
and they really didn't have anything that pertained to the planning board, but they had an interesting conversation as how they're going to handle the Cudworth Beaver Dam First Parish inter intersection. Well, make it one way. Well, one way at Cudworth would make a certain amount of sense. That's right. But the, the question is becomes is we don't know what level of traffic it is once we demolish part of the building and put up a senior center. Regardless, having it one way down to Elm Street would make far more sense than allowing anyone to go into Beaver Dam First Parish. That's yeah, but Elm Street's no bargain either. Well, whoever put up that little whatever it is, yeah, to help. What intersection are we talk? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm yeah, almost here. You know where Elm Street is? Cudworth and Elm. Do you know up the down Country, country Way? way. Mm -hmm. And then you, there's that little weird intersection. You could take a sharp left that's Cudworth that goes out to the old junior high. Oh, or okay. you can take right. a left I got sort you. of Elm Street, which goes down to First Parish. So what are you saying should be one way? Cudworth? One way. The, which one way that, so the one that goes by the tennis courts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which way should it be one way? It should be one way heading to Elm Street. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you're not coming back out on first parish of Beaver? No. Dangerous enough as it is there. Well, between the stone wall, the sight distances, people come up over that hill by the church, and they, why use a directional signal unless you absolutely have to? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you take your life in your hands going through there. Yeah. So, uh, I would, that's what I would suggest. How do you feel about that, Rebecca? You just I just have, I don't, I, I have to think about that. I just happen to always come the other way. What do you mean? You, I oh, always come oh. off Country Way and take take that left, cut through. Yeah. And and you cut across all and go down Beaver Dam? No, usually then I cut down Lawson or, or maybe I go over but you do Branch cut, or whatever that street is. You cross over. At First Parish and take a right onto Beaver Dam. Uh, am I crossing over First Parish? Yes, Maybe you yes. Yes, okay, you yes, I am. Yep. I'm doing that. But there's not a lot of traffic there now. Not like there. I wouldn't. I avoided that when it was you know, the junior high was there. I still avoid it. But Even I think that we're anticipating that they're going to destroy that, put up a senior center, which right. is going to be very active, which is what. Yeah. The buzz is about. So and we decided to wait just to see what, what yeah, the, what's going to happen. Yeah. But to recommend to the architect who's doing everything from soup to nuts on the senior center mm -hmm. to make sure that they address us to cover the, the traffic. Well, that's the, that would make sense. Yeah. Also, too. Yeah. But the traffic rules said the wait and see what the yeah. design looks like. That makes sense. Also, it is used extensively. The gym is still used. And, you know, there are a lot of people up there tonight yeah. for some reason. So they come out of the driveway. It's a, it's it's, a crazy intersection. It's a crazy intersection. We have a few in this town that need to be addressed. We also have people coming out of the school yeah. right into the intersection, yes. too. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Awful. So The angle's really bad, too, yeah. on first yeah. parish. Like, when I drive my big truck, I actually have to pull out perpendicular to like so I can look to the right. Yeah, you got to go this say, way and you got to yeah. look. Yeah. I don't like to go up First Parish to that stop sign. No. Because you can't see. some Somebody's coming up over the hill and somebody's coming up Beaver Dam. It, it can be it can be iffy. It really can be. I'm apt to go down, further down. What so is which, which road do they want to make? Are they suggesting one way? Or is Cudworth. that what you're suggesting? Yep. Yep. Cudworth. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I don't even know the street signs. Which it's, road is it's, that? It's, it's the Lord street Lord between, yeah. between the um, tennis courts and the cemetery, right? right. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. they want to make it field. one way, which direction? Towards down, she's or saying, the other way? Oh, down to Elm Street. Down to Elm Street. So out the other direction. towards Country Way. Take a right coming out of the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be difficult. It's all difficult. <coughs> Nothing in this town for traffic is easy. Nothing. All right, on that cheerful note, anything further for anybody? Well, we are happy 3A repaved. I know. It's very exciting. <laughs> yes, finally. It's like a washboard. I want them to re do something with Country Way from Branch Street all the way down to North Situate. Yep. It is a minefield going through there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awful. Yeah, how much of 3A are they going to do? Um, I heard they were only going as far as... And we should have barely where they are now. 
Yeah, which is they should what they what they've stripped off is what they're going to. They got from the Marshfield line to I guess Cohasset, but then they need to do further up because in Cohasset it's pretty bad. Yeah, they've already done Marshfield. They're doing Marshfield's Cohasset. done right. Yeah. So the they're just continuing Hingham, down, yeah. I think, yeah. right yeah. or and north. Hingham, yeah, Hingham's done. Yeah. Yeah. So, boy, that's tough to drive at night, especially if it's raining with that grooved pavement. It yeah. is. Yeah. So. Good traction, though. <sighs> <laughs> I'll entertain Bill's motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Morgan.